Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Jessica Dayon. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing something fun. I just came out with a new pattern. Um, it's a Dresden table topper pattern and the pattern comes in three sizes. So first there is the large pattern. This is a really great size for an end table table topper or a placemat. There is also a middle size. This would be good for, um, well, you could use it for anything, but I like to put it under a plant or um, even under a candle or as a small table topper. And the final size is this little size. This is perfect for a coaster or anywhere else you could think to use it. So today I wanna show you how to make these. We're gonna make the middle size. Let's get started. So here in my workspace, I have the medium size in various stages of construction. We're gonna go through the whole thing, but um, I just wanted to show you what you need to do. So first you're gonna print out the templates and there are templates for each size. So for each size, there is a right and a left, and then there is also a center circle template. So you need to, to make one size, whatever size it is, you need to cut out all of these templates. Now the um, petal templates, they come with the quarter of an inch seam allowance on it because that's how we're gonna use these. Uh, but the center has no seam allowance because that's how we're gonna use that. So I'll walk you through all of it. Let's get started by cutting these out. Uh, the first thing is that if you wanted, you could cut out the petals. Um, you could use these templates, these paper templates, um, and you could transfer them to something harder if that's what you wanted to do. You could use cardboard. You could use, um, they make like Coulter's template that you can purchase, um, which is kind of like a plasticky template. You can transfer that if you want. I don't usually do that. I tend to just use paper. Um, but the thing with paper is if you use this same template over and over, you could perhaps slice away a little bit of it every time and then you're not going to have the right size. So you need to make sure you're not trimming away any bit of the template when you do this. If you do trim away template, you have to print out a brand new one. So I have just some fabric stacked here. This is too thick um, to cut. I can cut the straight edges with this. I have a nice sharp, oh, did you see? I just did it. <laughs> I cut away this little sliver of paper, which is fine for this time, but that means that I won't use this template again because I could cut off more. And if every time you cut off a little sliver, um, those add up and you just don't want um, to lose your template size because you need, with a Dresden, it's important that the templates are exactly what they need to be or your circle won't lay flat. So um, I cut the bottom and the sides and now I'm just gonna like separate this pile a little bit. I have too many stacked here to be able to cut that um, curved edge. So I'm just making sure that they are all layered correctly and I'm gonna just put my template back on. And then what I do is I use the ruler to kind of protect my fingers. And then I'm just gonna go right along this curved edge and curve um, my rotary cutter along it like that. Now, if you wanted, if this was too difficult, um, if you thought it would be too difficult to get that to be accurate, you could just trace this on and um, cut them out with scissors. That would work perfectly fine. You'd wanna trace this to the back and you'd wanna make sure, um, you know, like this. You'd put the right side down on the fabric. You could trace that curve and then you can cut it out with scissors. That would be fine. Uh, so for this Dresden, we need um, 10 of each one. So we need, for all the sizes, you need the same amount, but we need 10 of each one, 10 right petal, 10 left petal. So I'm just gonna cut, I have a few more here to cut out and this gets easier with practice. So um, if this is something, if you haven't like cut a Dresden um, blade this way, it does really get so much easier with practice. The more you do it, the better you are. I just have one left. And um, the less you stack, the easier it is too. So if it's difficult for you, don't stack as many. Like that time I just cut one and it was super easy. Once you have all of your pieces cut out, 
the next thing you do is you're gonna just pair them off into twos. So uh, I have quite a few, I have already made a bunch of these. So I have some that are already pieced. I'm just kind of like taking note of the colors that I used in those so I can match some ones that will look nice with them. So these ones are already pieced in groups of two. I'm gonna go through what I have here and just match some of these into groups of two. And you can do it, there's no right or wrong here. You can just, whatever whatever feels good to you. And then I'm just gonna make piles. So like these two I'll have go together. And then I'm gonna do these two. Let's see, these two. And then I'm just gonna keep going through the stack that I have. And I'm going to match them into pairs. until they're all matched. And now I have these matched and um, I'm gonna keep them in the same order so they don't get mixed up and we're gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew these together. I brought my pieces over um, on my Bernina. I'm using foot 57D. This is my favorite quarter inch foot. I have um, the dual feet on this machine, so that's engaged. And basically, I'm just gonna sew these two sets together. So um, this Dresden has, for each pedal, it has two halves. I'm just gonna put one on top of the other and I'm matching them up on all sides around. We're going to sew down this side. Now, at the beginning, and the end of the Dresden pedal, I'm going to back stitch. We're gonna be putting um, a little bit of tension on these when we later on in the pro in the process. So I like to back stitch at the beginning and the end to really secure those threads so that later when we sew this together and we're turning the Dresden inside out that the stitches aren't coming apart on us. So I'm going to repeat this process. I'm just going to keep sewing all of these together. Back stitching at, at the beginning and the end of all of them. Now after you finish um, sewing these two sides of the petal together, uh, I have been pressing mine. Now I don't think that they have to be pressed if you don't want them to. Uh, but the reason that I do press them is because then you can see what they look like. So when you're laying out your 10 petals all the way around, you can see how your colors are interacting and how they look with each other. So that's the reason that I have been pressing these. And I just have been doing it the same way every time. First, I just set the seam. Then I open it up and I press that to one side. So this is what my petal looks like. This is what it looks like on the back. And I keep everyone kind of going the same direction. Just there's, they would be okay going opposite directions if that's how you wanted. But for this, I've just been keeping them all in the same direction. Um, and it's been working out well for me. So you just press these all so that they lay nice and flat. And then the next step is gonna to be to start laying out everything to put the dress in together. And this way you can see the colors really good. Like I said, you can see how they interact with each other. You can move them around until you find the balance that you like. After you have all of your petals pressed, you can just start laying them out. For each uh, size of the Dresden, we need 10 uh, double petals, so 10 of each. Uh, and you can just lay them out, just get 10. And then what you can do is once you see what everything's looking like, you can start switching your colors around. So right now I'm just grabbing any 10, need one more, and then um, you can start making them look the way you want them to so this one right here i can see i have like too many oranges for my liking two identical reds and pinks um and two identical whites so i like to switch those up so i'm gonna go into the other ones that i've made and i'm just gonna start making some switches i'm gonna pull that one and uh, i would like two reds but i don't want two of the same reds so i'm gonna try to put this red here they're kind of across from each other and then when i did that i see that these two are the same so i'm gonna pull one out 
and let's see what else I can put in. Maybe I can put in a green. Um, and then I'm just gonna switch these around until I like how they look. Like I am looking at how this looks, but at the same time, if you were making a bunch of these, say you were gonna do the smaller size for the coaster, uh, I really don't think you need to put like a ton of time into thinking about these pieces. I, I really think random is so beautiful. So um, while I am kind of like looking at it now, kind of seeing what looks nice to me for this one, um, the other ones I made, I didn't even look and they came out beautifully. So here's two of them. Uh, they came out really nice and I really kind of didn't pay attention too much to the, the setting of, of each of the colors. Um, but this collection is actually really beautiful and I have chosen to make them all out of this one collection and this is called Dawn on the Prairie and it's by uh, Fancy That Designs. It's a newer collection that recently came out. You might be able to find yardage or something of it. I just thought these colors were perfect for this season and um, I really liked how they all look together. So you just you can just spend some time if you'd like. Uh, just rearranging it until you you are happy with it. I am happy with how this looks now and we're gonna start sewing this together. So basically, let me just give you an overview. We're gonna just sew each one to the next one. So I'm gonna start with these two. I'm gonna start with one on top of the other and I'm gonna sew down this line. Now I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and the end again. And then after these two are sewn together, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna sew this one to it. And we're just gonna continue our way around the circle, just adding another petal till we get back to the beginning. And then we're gonna sew the first and the last one together along that seam. So let's do just that now. These are my first two and I'm gonna lay one on top of the other. I'm matching them all the way around. We're gonna sew this together. I'm gonna back stitch at the beginning and at the end. Okay, then when I open this up, now we're gonna have two petals together, see? We're gonna add the next one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put the next one on top and I'm gonna repeat this process. Just sewing all the way around this Dresden until all of the petals are hooked together. I have now sewn on all 10 petals and I'm back to the beginning. So basically just what I do is I fold it in half and then I match up the first petal and the last petal on all sides. And then we're just gonna sew this together just as if it were any other petal. So we're gonna back stitch at the beginning, sew down the length and back stitch at the end also and then cut it. And now what we have is kind of like a floppy circle. So the next step is to press this. So now we're gonna press this. Um, and what I like to do is I flip it over to the back and you can see it's pretty floppy. Um, but what we're gonna do is just start pressing. So um, it doesn't matter. I have found which way you press these, whether they all go in one direction um, for this specific Dresden, or if you alternate, it lays pretty nicely either way. So I like to just go a little bit at a time and I don't like stretch it or pull it to distort it, but I do just put a little, um, a small amount of tension on it just to make sure that seam is, is laying correctly before I go ahead and press it to the side. And then I just repeat that all the way around. So you can see these are really, really nicely pressed and we're just gonna continue around um, the whole circle till all of the petals are pressed. And once all the petals are pressed here, I just flip it over and then I just use my hands. Sometimes you have to like spread it out a little bit because it still is um, like 
scrunched up a little and it's not perfectly flat but i find that as soon as i spread this out with my hands you can see the whole thing goes flat and then i just press uh from the front just one more time and now everything is laying really nice and flat and we can continue on to finish this project up so we're going to take a break here for today we have the petals assembled in our grandmother's sunburst and we're going to stop here. Now tomorrow we're going to come back and I will show you how to finish this off. If you have any questions on this part of the video, just let me know in the comments and I will be sure to answer. Thanks for following along and I'll see you back here tomorrow to finish the rest.